Hi, my name is Tomo. Welcome to my channel. Today I would like to talk about my off-grid, 100% off-grid rainwater collection system. So first of all, I have to tell you about some of the specifications. So we are in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I cannot get city water here or electricity. So uh, I have a very small solar system. I have two deep cycle batteries that I constantly charge with a 100 uh, watt panel. It's not a lot of power. Because of that, my main power, I consider the 12 volt batteries. I, I don't have 110. Uh, I have an inverter, but I don't want to leave it on all the time. So this is one very important aspect of the system. It has to be 12 volt based. The other thing is that I'm only here one day a week, so it has to be hands off, completely automated. The other important aspect of this system is that I want to be able to store a lot of water. I, I have a lot of trees. I am worried that one day I'm going to have a fire. So I want to be able to store 15, 1600 gallon of water. And I, you guys know that most systems, water systems, they are based on a pressure pump and an expansion tank. So I want to be able, if needed, to get water out of the big storage tank without, without power. Unfortunately, uh, those uh, pumps, they are all operated by 110 volt. There is no 12 volt solution just yet. So I, uh, I want to be able to get water out even without electricity. That's a very important thing as well. But I also want to have the option to have a proper pressure tank to make proper pressure inside the cabin. If you take a look around, this is what I have. I have a 400 square foot cabin and I wanted to collect water off of this roof. So you see it's a barn style cabin. And first of all, I installed gutters on both sides. Furthermore, I installed these 50 gallon barrels to catch the water from the roof. I have multiple levels of filtration system. It evolved over time, big time. This is one thing I screwed up, learned, and I reinvented. So you see in the gutter, I have this screen to remove, filter out the big stuff. Second of all, you can see that I cut a hole, a, a downspout sized hole on the top of the barrel. And this is the second layer of filtration. I bought this from Amazon. Uh, they make it for 50 gallon drums. It's perfect. Every now and then I just come here and I empty this junk out. So the big stuff doesn't get into the barrel. You see that I have an overflow here. That is very important because sometimes I just have way too much water and I dump the water away underground. Over there, you have to believe me that there is a, a three inch pipe that goes out and the overflow goes there. I also wanted to be able to get water to rinse dishes and stuff like that. So I have uh, this valve here. The, it's very important that the two barrels are connected. They are connected on the bottom right here with three quarter inch packs so that the water evens out. You'll see that in a minute why that's important. Also, it's very important that the two barrels are exactly, they are at the exact same height on the two sides of the cabin, okay? So,
this is the important side of the cabin. This is where the magic happens. So you see that from the other barrel, that three quarter inch pipe goes right here. So the water level in the two barrels are perfectly identical. I also have an overflow right here. The same exact overflow, I, so I dump water away from the cabin. Same downspout, gutter, filtration, two levels of filtration. Everything is identical. There's one big difference. You notice that I have half inch packs here. That's because I have a 12 volt pump inside this barrel sitting, uh, sitting uh, on the bottom. It's a submergible. It's almost identical to a regular well pump. The only difference is it is operated uh, by 12 volt. This electrical cord goes into the cabin uh, where the battery is. At this point, I need to mention that uphill inside that little shed, I have a 1500 gallon, 1550 gallon uh, storage tank for the water. You're gonna, I'm gonna explain why it's inside the shed. So that shed is uphill. So now you know how I'm able to get water out of this tank, uh, even without electricity, it's just, I just simply use gravity if I need water without electricity. So the first stage of the system is based on that pump. That pump connected to the 12 volt battery pumps water into the big storage tank. To make sure that it only pumps water, again, it's now we are talking about the aspect of being hands-off, uh, that pump has to turn on once this barrel is full. And then it has to turn off when the 1500 gallon storage tank is full, so it doesn't overflow. The way I do that is using switches, floaters, you can buy those on Amazon. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. So what that switch does, I connect it in series from the 12 volt battery to the pump. So we have the pump and two switches in series. So the first switch that's inside this barrel is set up such that if the water exceeds this level, it's gonna turn on, it's gonna conduct electricity to the pump. The second switch is inside the storage tank. It's also in series and it operates exactly the opposite way. If the big storage tank is full, then it disconnects the circuit. So I don't overfill that big tank. So because of that, I have to run wires from the storage tank all the way to here. It's a pain in the butt, but it has to be done. The distance between the cabin this area and the storage tank is about 35 yards. I decided to just bury packs, to be honest with you. So from that corner of the, of the, from that corner of the cabin to the shed, I have, th I have two packs lines running. So one line is basically this one. And that's what fills up the big storage tank. It's very simple. So that line runs all the way there. 
and the second one I'm going to show you in a bit that is connected to a big pressure tank and a pressure pump so that's the pressure side and that's connected to the faucet and everything else the shower inside the cabin it's very important to mention that this 12 volt pump is fused inside the cabin this is the inside of the tank house it has a tiny door um, but you can see that inside I have a 1550 gallon huge storage tank so that line that's coming from the outside pump is that guy this is the third level of protection I have a 30 micrometer 20 inch filter to make sure that all the water that I pump into the big storage tank is filtered I shower with this water I rinse the dishes with it and uh, I use it for concrete mixing everything you can imagine so having this filter on the incoming line is very important because I don't want any kind of sediment on the bottom of this tank I don't want to clean it I don't want to do anything with it I don't treat this water um, so I just do mechanical filter later on if I want to do additional filtering I can I don't have that right now you can see that line goes in there so that's how I fill up the tank this tank right now you just have to believe me is full you can hear the water splashing and then on the bottom you can see that there's a two inch adapter everything here is a one inch flexible hose it's very important to do flexible hose uh, to the pressure tank because you can actually crack um, the tank if you don't do it this way a friend of mine actually did just that so lesson learned always use flexible hose and don't do straight connections to the pump because it vibrates this moves because of the water level changing so the pressure inside this tank is changing all the time so these connections are very important unfortunately i couldn't find these fittings in regular schedule 40 so these are all expensive schedule 80 but there's no reason for that you can see how the pump is connected this is a jet pump and this pump is connected to an 85 gallon pressure tank so this gives me the pressure this is very important I don't use a lot of water so I don't want this pressure pump to be under pressure all the time so I put the check valve behind the pump so that means that once the pump turns off the pump itself is no longer under pressure because you cut the pressure off with this check valve right so only the line after this remains under pressure and the rest is not pressurized you can see that right now i have about 40 psi it's uh, my pressure switch is right here i unfortunately have to move the pressure switch that came with the pressure pump because the check valve is behind the pump that's a lesson i also learned the hard way so this pressure switch it it turns on at 30 psi and turns off at 50. you can see how everything is installed uh, it's kind of neat so because of the check valve once all the pressure is gone that means that i used up all the water that pressure that jack valve has a spring inside this big tank is on top of the hill so that means even if the pressure is gone once i open the faucet inside the cabin the water can flow freely to the cabin it's very slow because the height difference between this uh, big tank and the cabin is not that huge it's about six feet 
so that doesn't give me a whole lot of pressure but even without electricity I can get some water out of this system which is neat that's what I wanted you see the pressure tank you can see that I have three quarter inch packs go all the way behind go all the way behind the storage tank I have all kind of valves here it's very important I also learned this the hard way unfortunately you have to be able to drain the system all right in the winter your water lines will freeze especially if I'm not here for two weeks even though this is in Texas those water lines will freeze and I cracked the water uh, heater because of that because I didn't pay attention the way I build this system is you can see that there is an inline valve so I can turn off the pressure going to the cabin that line goes to the cabin hopefully you can see that behind the filter and there is a second valve that is connected to just uh, another half inch packs so if I close that valve and I open that valve and I open the faucet inside the cabin all the water because we are again higher than the cabin all the water is gonna drain from the system so it's not gonna freeze you can see that line goes to that corner and that corner has a breakout hole and that goes to the cabin so only two lines and the electrical wire goes to the cabin on the other side of the tank again there is a hole and that's for the switch that is connected to the pump that's inside the 50 gallon barrels to prevent that pump to overfill these big tanks that is very important again this system has to be completely hands off now let's talk about why do I have this killer tank house why didn't I just leave this uh, tank outside I get this question all the time first of all I needed a place for all this stuff I'm not gonna put this stuff inside the cabin second of all because I don't have electricity I'm gonna have a pretty huge solar system so I'm gonna put my solar panels on top of this guy so when I built this I built it such that that roof gets a lot of sun the slope of the roof is 30 degrees we are in Texas so this roof is gonna get a lot of direct sunlight is perfectly perpendicular where the sun is when it's at, at its highest position this is that that determined the orientation of the tank house so all the equipment for the solar system I'm going to put it right here and I'm going to use the thermal mass of the pressure tank to keep it from freezing. So you can see that I already started putting in insulation in here. I'm going to also insulate the roof as well uh, when the solar panels are up. So this is going to be completely insulated. There is an entire series of videos I made when I was building the tank house and also when I added all the drain, the overflow. I am going to leave a link to these videos in the description. You can go ahead and check them out if you're interested. Hopefully this all made sense. Uh, if you have any questions or comment or if you have a system and you did something differently, please let me know. Uh, I'm also learning uh, this is like the third or fourth iteration of this system so uh, hopefully we can learn from each other uh, I hope you enjoyed this please give me a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this I'll see you in the next one bye